Today we're talking about Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, a man who's in charge of translating Trump's actions into foreign policy. Because apparently the poop emoji was busy. Pompeo, pictured here on a first date with Saudi leader Mohammed bin Salman, looks like it's going well. Is very focused on Middle Eastern diplomacy. So why are we talking about Pompeo today? Did something terrible happen? Actually the opposite. He recently published an op-ed in Foreign Affairs detailing the administration's Iran strategy. Poor guy, I wonder if he thought it would blow up like the other op-eds we've seen. Hey, they got wall-to-wall -wall coverage, but at least you got a YouTube channel with 277 subscribers talking about you. The first thing this op-ed talks about is... I have found that moving away from leading from behind has been welcomed by the world. Yes, leading from behind, also known as following. It's a phrase that probably only Republicans watching this show are familiar with. Here's Obama getting the third degree from an odd source. Now, you took some heat for the whole leading from behind tactic here with Libya. I explain that. Well, the truth was, we, you know, this was a, a phrase that the media picked up on, but okay. it's not one that I ever used. Now that we've covered your leadership policies in Libya, let's read some goofy headlines. So this was largely a Republican thing, but it was a concern about Obama's policies in the Middle East. Originally used by a White House advisor in a New Yorker article, leading from behind refers to a cost-saving strategy where, rather than running dicks first into a third country, we took more of a backseat on the invasion of Libya and let European powers do the brunt of the work. Sounds good, right? Well, because leading from behind as a slogan sounds about as strong as boldly announcing, we're not retreating, we're just advancing away from the enemy. It became shorthand for the weakness of Obama's diplomacy. Leading Pompeo to write in this article, President Trump has been clear about the need for bold American leadership to put the United States security interests first. This common sense principle reverses the Obama administration's preferred posture of leading from behind, an accommodationless strategy that incorrectly signaled diminished American power and influence. So, the first thing that was alarming to me was that this op-ed read less like the informed analysis of an ex-CIA director turned Secretary of State, and more like Trump's Twitter decided to try its hand at breaking into the fake news media. I mean, it took half of this Around Strategy article to actually start talking about our Around Strategy. I've heard podcasts that get to the point faster. The plan is threefold. First. The sting of sanctions will be painful if the regime does not change its course from the unacceptable and unproductive path it has chosen to one that rejoins the League of Nations. These will indeed end up being the strongest sanctions in history when we are complete. The strongest sanctions in history? Not sure North Korea would agree with you on that one, but hey, good to see you're optimistic. This first prong is economic sanctions, which you have to start off with because we kind of made a bit of a scene leaving the Aranzio to engage in this. This is an odd one too because he barely talked about the sanctions in this paper. Instead he talked about the Iranian economy in terms that would make Charles Dickens think he's being a little too hard on the place. The regime has parasitically consumed it and shelled out billions in subsidies for dictators, terrorists, and rogue militias. The regime is controlled by a desire for self-enrichment and a revolutionary ideology from which it does not easily depart. Now, he does conclude by saying we intend to get global imports of Iranian crude oil as close to zero as possible by November 4th, but that's it! No explanation into how we're going to get other countries not to buy it. This is the reason why we're trying to keep the price of oil down using Saudi oil production so that the oil Iran does sell won't produce enough revenue to stabilize their economy. But you wouldn't know it from this piece. Most recently in the sanction news we saw the United Nations International Court of Justice that ruled this morning that the United States must ease sanctions on Iran. Well, here's what Secretary of State Mike Pompeo had to say about the court's decision. I'm announcing that the United States is terminating the 1955 Treaty of Amity with Iran. This is a decision, frankly, that is 39 years overdue. Wow, when the international courts come out in support of Iran, that is not a good sign for you. 
Maybe these were the strongest sanctions in history, and I'm just ye of little faith. That Treaty of Amity, which was signed in 1955, is super dated and reads like one of the teenage years of Uncle Sam's diary. I mean, look at Article 1. There shall be firm and enduring peace and sincere friendship between the United States of America and Iran. We're going to be best friends forever. Who cares that we go to different colleges or you have a violent revolution that turns anti-American? This, what we have right here, is eternal and needs to be put into writing. Things got tricky when we also put into writing that you can't sanction the other, which led to the International Court of Justice saying our actions were unfair and us just piecing out of this treaty. That's only prong number one, and who knows, maybe he got his juices flowing after getting the first piece out of the way. Economic pressure is one part of the US campaign, deterrence is another. Alright, so deterrence, sounds good. The president's own public communications themselves function as a deterrence mechanism. The all caps tweet he directed at Iranian President Hassan Rouhani in July, in which he instructed Iran to stop threatening the United States, was informed by a strategic calculation. President Trump warning Rouhani in all caps, never ever threaten the United States again or you will suffer consequences the likes of which few throughout history have ever suffered before. We are no longer a country that will stand for your demented words of violence and death. Be cautious. Yeah, that all caps tweet just screams God and calculated. So Donald Trump's Twitter feed is the second prong. This would be a lot more comforting if we were entering into hostile talks with Rosie O'Donnell. This is intended to show that the president would be willing to use the full force of the US Army to keep Iran at bay. Because if there's one group that's willing to follow up on their threats, it's people who post in all caps on the internet. He did specify the type of activities that would warrant specific United States threats. The United States will hold the regime in Tehran accountable for any attack that results in injury to our personnel or damage to our facilities. Basically, if they back a group that attacks us, then well, I'm not sure exactly what. It just says America will respond swiftly and decisively in defense of American lives. So who knows, maybe we'll bring in the generals to come up with a truly destructive hashtag to permanently turn the tide of this flame war. Another critical component of US pressure campaign against Iran is commitment to exposing the regime's true brutality. Now, again, details were slim, but basically... Tehran meets Washington's demands. Pompeo is offering an end to sanctions, a restoration of diplomatic relations between the two countries, and allowing Iran to access Western technology that it's been denied. President Trump has made clear that the pressure will only increase if Iran does not live up to the standards the United States and its partners and allies and the Iranian people themselves want to see. This third point only turns into its own prong when we say we're willing to talk to our friends about how bad Iran is and see if we can get them to abandon the Iran deal with us. Unfortunately, the United States doesn't do a ton of business with Iran on our own, so unilateral sanctions are kinda like me boycotting the Victoria's Secret. One of that much effect. It ended with a section where, oh man, maybe don't write about this when you're meeting with the Saudi king trying to get him off the hook for murdering a reporter. But the US has the power of moral clarity. So hey, if all else fails in the Middle East, at least we can sit back and rely on our moral clarity. Alright, so to summarize, our strategy is sanctions, Trump continuing to act unpredictably regarding Iran in a calculated manner, and reminding our allies of how bad Iran is to get them to join our sanctions campaign. Sounds like some of those prongs could still use a little sharpening. When I started writing this episode, it was intended to be on our Iranian strategy, because that's what the article was about. But reading through this, I think I learned a lot more about Mike Pompeo than our strategy in dealing with Iran. If it was an option, Pompeo definitely was one of the guys who took the Trump loyalty oath. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and remember to give us a thumbs up. 
Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.